know, the formation of the Arkansas Center for Data Sciences was uh, a result of the Governor's Blue Ribbon Commission. In other words, before my time even moving here, I was probably consulting with the state from, from South Carolina, but uh, the, the governor and a bunch of uh, chief executive officers and chief information officers, as well as two or three of the major university presidents came together and said, you know, we've got a major gap in terms of our tech demand versus our tech supply in terms of talent, people, skills, and, uh, you know, realizing that that was not an Arkansas problem, that's a national epidemic. <laughs> you know, they, they, the idea was, how are we gonna do something about it? You know, let's quit talking about it and start to see if we can have an impact. We've eliminated every barrier to entry for an employer. You know, they don't have to deal with the DOL. They don't have to deal with project managing the implementation. They don't have to do any paperwork. Uh, we're doing the, we're finding candidates for the companies who can't find them, right? So they don't have to use our uh, supplemental staffing strategy, but at the same time, we're aligning all of their training to the uh, standards within 17 IT occupations. And, uh, and then the other thing is we've got funding to cover all the cost of their RTI training. So you, you put all that together and most employers at the end go, okay, what's the catch? You know, <laughs> sounds too good to be true. And, and we say, hey, we're not here to sell you anything, right? We're not a for-profit entity. We're not a staffing firm. We're here to support the ecosystem. And we want you to make an informed decision as to whether or not this strategy can help you or not. And that's, that's really been working because now that you've got 100 employers and 500 plus apprentices, there's enough credibility that they say, okay, tell me more. So we just wrote an article called the first 500, right? And we wrote an article about employers, the first 100. And of the employers, you know, 59 of those first 100 employers were small and medium-sized businesses, which is remarkable because some of them wouldn't be here today if they hadn't used this program because after the pandemic and with everything going on, I'm not sure they would have survived. Uh, so, and then on the front of, you know, the employers that are the large ones, the Walmarts of the world that could be doing this on their own, but have chosen to say, why would we, right? We like the assistance in the ecosystem to be able to find candidates in a non-traditional pathway that their normal path, you know, their normal recruiting would never find, right? So there's, there's different reasons why a small or medium or a large company gets involved. Now, from the standpoint of the 500, right? We've learned a lot about where they come from. And so it is a pretty wide range of all the way from a non-college goer, unemployed Arkansan, you know, which would include some minorities and females and underserved rural people, uh, all the way to some career changers that because of the pandemic or otherwise, or even beyond, have found themselves knowing that this opportunity to enter the IT profession is now available to them because many of them would look and say, well, I got a degree, but it's in whatever. And they look at these IT positions and go, I think I could do that. But then they look at the qualifications for the job that's posted and they say, well, I guess I'm not qualified. So they, they never even apply. The stories abound from where somebody comes from and what ends up being. I, the one we're doing just next week is a, a woman who had gone to school thinking she was going to get a degree in, uh, well, I don't even know if she started in computer science, but anyway, life happens. She now has a family. She's a mother of six. Uh, hadn't been in the workforce for more than 15 years. And now she's a UX designer at Walmart. And she found her niche. She went through a few training classes with us. She took a couple of them at, at NWAC, which is Northwest Arkansas Community College, but she didn't finish. She didn't get a, a certificate or anything. But then with us, she got into a work-based learning opportunity. And then next thing you know, she's on the list of candidates we put in front of Walmart. They love her. And she's X number of months in, and one of their VPs is saying, oh, we got to go tell this story, you know, because here's this stay-at-home mom, mother of six, you know, didn't get any kind of degree or cert, and now she's just knocking it out of the park, making 70 grand a year as a UX designer at Walmart. And we have a lot of those kind of stories, whether they started, you know, unemployed, or they were a jeweler, or they were doing something else. We're at 102 uh, committed employers to date, we were going to try to double that this year. I mean, with as much exposure now that we're getting, is it possible? And, and that helps the ratio 
you know, we've gone from the first year, it was like for every one employer, we had kind of three apprentices, a one to three ratio. And, and Bill asked me, he said, will it stay that way? And I said, the more we add large company cohorts and community cohorts where you got 15 or 20 at a time per company, that ratio changes. And it's already, you know, if you think about the first 100 and the first 500, that ratio has gone to one to five. And so I think that may continue to change, but who knows? I mean, small and medium sized businesses, they're sometimes looking for one data analyst or one software developer or one uh, tech support person. So, you know, those kind of bring that ratio down at the same time that the larger companies help it in the other way. But uh, as far as projections, that's kind of where we are is, is we're looking to double. If, if you want to just put it down on paper, we'll double what we did last year or this year. You know, one of the things I think that is inherent upon any nonprofit, and, and I've tried to share this with the entire team, is that, you know, you can get very caught up in the transactional side of what we do. You know, here's how we moved a candidate through the process. But in the end, we got to justify to somebody, you know, what do those results look like? You know, what kind of impact are you having? So having a single place to make it simple, to be able to look at demographics, to be able to look at things like, you know, what have we impacted in terms of uh, location, you know, uh, I, I just think that we needed a single place to go to, to start dissecting the data to tell us things. Are we really doing a good job at DEIA, right? We think we are, you know, 62% of those apprentices fill some underserved population, whether female, minority, veteran, rural, unemployed, you know, disabled, uh, whatever. And, and is that good? You know, we think it's good, but should we set a higher target? or you know whatever i mean others can tell us but in some ways when we go to get the next grant we've got a pretty good sample size when they say oh we'd like to support more women in it okay well let, let, let us show you what that data that we've already accomplished looks like apprentice scope to me it's an efficiency tool because what we were having to take a lot of time to manually go to several sources and make sure that that report that we have to send the whips report and all of what we do for our granting agencies it took a long time. You know, Logan needed help and he's just one person and then he can't do a lot of other things. So now it's all in one place. We're going to establish that we know exactly what's needed and can, you know, we might have to manage a few errors here along the way, but, but we've got a single system that we know how to go in and make the corrections, get it accurate and send it. Right. Uh, and then from the standpoint of reporting and having a, a consistent area we go to that has all of our data that we need to be able to then compare, run relationships of data, and draw some conclusions, that's the benefit I see that was more difficult before and now becomes mainstream for us.